Hello and a warm welcome to the channel. Today we're going to look at the first field trial of the Tesla coil antenna. Now if you haven't already seen the first video I recommend that you do. There is a link below in the description. It'll give you some context to what we're trying to do and uh, bring you up to speed. We're using a modified Tesla coil to transmit on the 40 meter amateur band using uh, in this instance CW or continuous wave Morse code call it what you like and uh, we will be using about 5 watts in the hope that we can achieve some distance um, maybe as much as three or four hundred miles the Tesla coil used as an HF antenna has a very narrow bandwidth so it has to be precisely tuned to make it work with a transceiver. I found the most efficient way of tuning the coil was to have a broken copper ring, it's actually a quarter inch uh, copper water pipe just above the top of the coil and this uh, copper pipe is um, grounded to the bottom of the coil. So by changing the distance between the copper pipe and the top of the coil you effectively have a variable capacitor in series with the top of the coil and that is very effective in tuning the coil to a specific frequency within limits. Once the secondary is tuned I have to tune the primary to give the best possible SWR match to the uh, transmitter. I've got a air variable capacitor in series with the primary and by adjusting this I've been able to get the SWR down below 1.5 to 1. In the previous video we set up the coil here in the shop. Now the shop has a steel roof, steel doors and is effectively a bit of a Faraday cage. We did manage to transmit several hundred miles and indeed when I connected the base of the coil to the shop's electrical ground it did boost the signal quite a bit. In this trial we're going to try a simple setup with no ground. We're going to take the coil out into the field just place the coil on the ground but with no connection to it and see how well it does. So let's take a look at what happened. So here's the uh, setup. We're out in a nature reserve and they've got the uh, Tesla coil antenna set up in a crate. I'll just take a look. Ready to go connected to the transmitter at the back of the uh, truck there and I've got plenty of um, ferrites on the cable to try and cut down common mode currents. VNA is telling us that we've got a 1.34 to 1 SWR at around about 7.2 7 uh, megahertz. Perfect. Hope you can see it because it's pretty bright and sunny out here. I got my mountain topper 3B set up at 7.020 megahertz. If you can see that in the sunshine there, and I got a key there in case I need it. That's my uh, lithium battery and the output is going through these two uh, um, uh, chokes and or ferrite chokes and all the way out to the antenna over there. So I'm going to put it into beacon mode and see if I can pick it up on an SDR and I'm using my cell phone for that. Wow, 
you can hear it. S3 noise level average was peaking at S7 and it was still getting through. Let's try it once more. Well, I consider that quite the success. We're actually uh, transmitting uh, all the way to Edmonton, Alberta, right in that direction, actually. Well, I think it's about 270 miles, thereabouts. We'll check that when we get back. But uh, yeah, very pleased with the uh, results and uh, I think this is a great, uh, great success. So let's summarize and see where we go from here. We sent an intelligible CW signal 370 miles or 610 kilometers without actually having any wire in the air, just the Tesla coil on the ground. I suspect it won't be as efficient as a wire antenna, but then again, it's a lot easier to deploy in the field than putting up masts and connecting up a wire antenna. So, uh, you know, it's a trade-off between the two. And in some circumstances, a Tesla coil on the ground could be the way to go. I'm also really curious to see what effect grounding the coil might have. And I think the best way to do this is to um, operate near a source of water, a creek or a lake, and drop a copper plate connected to the base of the coil into the water and uh, see whether that makes a big difference to the radiation efficiency. I think that's going to be the topic of the next video. I just need to figure out a good place where I can take all the equipment to and set up and uh, we'll see what happens. If you have any questions or observations, uh, please uh, mention them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to answer them. That's it for now. Have a good one and I'll see you in the next video.